Okay, then guys, let's start. We have one hour and 25 minutes. First is the seeds group uh, with Julia and Anatoly and uh, Natalia and Oliesia. So uh, I will give the floor to them. Uh, afterward, it's the, it's the berries and the apple concentrates. We're very much looking forward to hear you. Thank you. Thank you. So, yes, we are seeds group and we are proud of that because uh, we believe that uh, and we know that this sector in Ukrainian agriculture is really perspective and there are things uh, that can be exported in Norway, but there are also difficulties which we are going to talk about. So, these are the main um, total production of uh, Ukrainian flag seeds. Uh, as you see, uh, the year before uh, there was a great capacity uh, according to the central statistics. Uh, we, have, um, we still have uh, possibilities to increase. Uh, the previous year there were 34,000 hectares uh, used for this uh, culture and um, uh, production was uh, nearly uh, nine centners uh, per hectare. As for the sunflowers, this culture was uh, always uh, one of the main uh, cultures in Ukrainian agriculture, so Ukraine focuses much more on that, but it should be mentioned uh, at once that uh, Ukraine really do not have separated statistics for their uh, sunflower kernels, which Okla is interested in uh, for the confectionery, but uh, there is data for the whole production of sunflower seeds in total. Um, as we see, the, the numbers are quite big as well. Um, nearly 20, 20 centners uh, from the hectare can be uh, get and uh, Ukraine uses uh, about 5 million hectares each year. Um, it was difficult to get the statistics for the upcoming year, but the expert differs, the, the expectation differs, but uh, the, the main idea that it will not decrease at least. Uh, if we speak about experts, uh, we should say that uh, Ukraine does not uh, prioritize on experts of sunflower kernels because uh, the most uh, quantity of sunflower seeds goes for processing of sunflower oil. And Ukraine uh, today is one of the biggest exporters of sunflower oil. We export more than 50% of sunflower oil on the market. And that's why we're a small quantity quantity goes uh, for, uh, of seeds uh, goes for export uh, and uh, if you see in uh, 2014 the quantity was only uh, 10 uh, 100 thousand tons and uh, the drop in uh, 2013 was because of the complicity to collect sunflower seeds and um, our farmers started it very late and uh, couldn't uh, sell as much as they did in previous years. And if we see on the second graph uh, the uh, countries, the main directions where we mostly export seeds, I don't know if you heard it, uh, that we do not have separate um, statistics for a conventionary sunflower seeds and oilic sunflower seeds. Uh, we have the common data for uh, these two uh, types of seeds. And um, as I said, uh, Ukraine uh, mostly or is mostly oriented on processing of sunflower oil, and that's why the majority of crop goes for the processing. And today Ukraine is the first in export of sunflower oil. We export more than 50% on the global market. That's why only uh, in 2014 only 100,000 tons of seeds as a raw material uh, was exported outside of Ukraine. Uh, yeah, it's sunflower seeds, sunflower kernels. 
Um, and if we see on the second graph, uh, it's very interesting to see how Ukraine changed the priority of uh, countries, of our contractors. If in 2010 we mostly uh, exported to Asia, uh, then in 2014 the majority of export goes to Europe. Uh, so that's why this direction, uh, European direction, is priority for Ukraine. Uh, as we say about flexit, can you? We, it doesn't work. Well, flex seats, uh, we also see the main priority is Europe, as you see here, and also we do not have very big uh, quantities of exports, it's only 25,000 tons. If we speak about um, some barriers and some difficulties in export, the main barrier for the Ukrainian producers is the 10% export tariff. It was introduced uh, to protect and to develop Euro Ukrainian producers of sunflower oil, uh, but uh, in uh, January the draft of the law was introduced to Verkhovna Rada uh, to uh, abolish this uh, export tariff, and it's still discussing, so maybe this year our exporters will have uh, zero export tariff, we hope so, and we already have spoken to our uh, legislative and administrative uh, bodies about this topic. If we speak about import tariffs, uh, uh, we have uh, compared uh, import to Norway, to Denmark and to Sweden, uh, Sweden. and we uh, compared Ukrainian exporters with our main uh, competitors of, uh, on export is Bulgaria and Romania. And we see if we export to Norway, both Ukrainian, uh, Bulgaria and Romania, we have the same uh, conditions, the same export tourists and the same VAT. But if we talk about delivering to uh, Denmark and Sweden, in this case, unfortunately, uh, Bulgaria and Romania uh, have the best uh, conditions because they have zero VAT uh, besides inside European Union. And Ukrainian, uh, if you import product from Ukraine, you will have to pay 25% of VAT. Uh, the same is for uh, flexits. Uh, switch. Uh, if we speak about uh, logistics, there are two options how to deliver. By land, it will be 21 uh, tons truck, and by sea, uh, it can be 25 tons, uh, and it can be uh, delivered from Odessa. And we calculated the cost per one ton, and uh, the delivery by sea is more economically efficient, although it will take uh, 10 uh, from 10 to 17 days, compared to delivery by land, which takes four to six days. Uh, the price uh, varies from the uh, direction. If uh, the, the most expensive is, of course, delivery to uh, Norway, it's around 3,400 uh, euros. And the cheapest is delivery to uh, Denmark, uh, it's around 2,700 uh, 2, euros. And by sea, it will be, uh, of course, a little more expensive. But if you divide it to the total quantity of uh, seats which is inside, you will have the less cost per one ton. Here you can see the contact details of the main sunflower and flax seeds producers and exported. With three, of the, with, uh, three co uh, companies of this list, we had personal meetings, and I want to tell you, to tell you more about these companies. Saiva Company. The company works since 1993. Uh, they are producers of sunflower and flax seeds, and they are the main exporter of flax. Uh, they share more than 40%. Uh, they export to European countries and uh, Turkey, India, and other countries. The second one, GNL. Uh, they are producers and exporters of groats, flax seeds, and uh, um, sunflower seeds also. Uh, they are ready to co for cooperation. Mm. Oh, uh, 
and uh, I want to draw attention for Farsash company. They specialize in cultivation of uh, confectory sunflowers, and this year they establishing their enterprise which will process and peel sunflower kernels with high quality. Um, capital trade, export Ukraine and Ankara trade are ready for cooperation and um, needed quantity and quality of flax seeds are available now. The next one. Uh, average work prices for flax seeds. The average prices are based on replies from export companies from seven countries which have from uh, uh, website uh, TradeKit and Alibaba. Um, as you can see, Ukrainian price as, as very comp uh, are very competitive. Uh, um, sure, 10% tax makes our price less attractive, but at the same time, it's in the average price. As for the uh, sunflowers prices, we can't compare up to now because there is no basis for compare. Uh, last year, we ha we, um, Ukrainian producers received very bad uh, crops and the size of uh, kernels was very small. And the new price not formed yet. So price will be in uh, September or October only. Um, in Ukraine, we have Ukrainian standards of quality. Um, we, uh, we, its name, uh, Ukrainian standards of quality, this too. Uh, so for sunflower seeds, um, sunflower uh, kennels and sunflower seeds must comply to Ukrainian uh, standards of quality, this to 1011-2008. Uh, and nine. And for flag seeds, we have uh, for this product Ukrainian standards of quality. This two uh, uh, seven thousand eight hundred sixty-seven and a uh, two hundred and eight. Uh, so I compare uh, Ukrainian standards of quality and uh, BRC standards of quality. And as you can see, uh, the standards of quality in Ukraine is lower than European standards. Um, about uh, our legislation, um, in, uh, 20, in 2014, um, Ukraine uh, Signific uh, signed the um, Ukrainian-European Association Agreement. And due to this agreement, Ukraine Cabinet of Ministers uh, must harmonize Ukrainian standards of quality to European ones. So it's very important and a lot of Ukrainian producers wait for these um, legislative changes. Uh, so the next one. Um, so we uh, find the best Ukrainian companies that um, can export sunflower kennels and flax seeds brown. So uh, the two big companies that can do it is uh, Saivo and um, uh, GNL. So I want um, to uh, I compare Ukrainian firm Saivo standards of quality and Norwegian and. Uh, so, as you can see, the quality of uh, sunflower kernels is very good and uh, um, even uh, um, about, uh, if we can say about aftotexin and uh, um, lead max, it's, uh, the level is better even then. So it's very good, we see. But um, what about problems? So uh, we uh, telephone to a lot of Ukrainian companies and um, uh, to talk about flax seeds brown, um, a lot of Ukrainian companies, for example, even um, Saiva and GNL company, uh, is confident that the quality of sunflower kernels and flax seeds uh, is good, especially flax seeds brown. Uh, but um, if we can say about um, sunflower uh, confectionery, the quality um, of Ukrainian uh, kernels uh, can be um, lower than uh, because uh, um, the quality uh, greatly depends on climatic conditions, so you can um, know it. Within our business case, we were supposed also to, assess, to make an assessment of responsible sourcing uh, issues in Ukraine. And um, yeah, if you look uh, at the 
international reports, uh, the picture is not that satisfying. Ukraine is uh, constantly criticized, uh, but at the same time, if you uh, look, if you divide uh, state sector and private sectors, the situation is uh, slightly, it's not slightly, but it's uh, quite different. Private companies are more responsible for, for their human rights and, um, and, and they declare their social responsibility. The, the reason why you wouldn't find it in Ukrainian producers, for example, on, on the websites, is because uh, it's quite a new phenomena in Ukraine and people just uh, do not, uh, not call it for social responsibility. But when we talked, for example, to Saivo, they assured us that uh, all their uh, employees uh, have rights uh, according to the Ukrainian law and uh, there should not be any difficulties and moreover there were made important amendments to Ukrainian legislation and uh, all these uh, Ukrainian European aspirations uh, show that uh, Ukraine is on the right way and uh, um, partners in Ukraine they should just uh, highlight that it's as important as the quality of the product to keep uh, to keep the human rights uh, in order. And one more thing that is, uh, Ukraine operates under the same legislation as Norway. Ukraine has uh, ratified uh, all the conventions is also based on, so there should not be any problems uh, to work with the uh, Ukrainian companies. And the last one, uh, action plan. Um, what we have also found that it's very important uh, for the Norwegian companies to build their relations and to build trust. So the first thing that we would recommend uh, finding partners and uh, deliveries is to, to send their representatives and to meet uh, local companies uh, in personal and to, uh, to see the production facilities and uh, yes, uh, look at the quality of the products and uh, the and according to the uh, codes of conduct. Um, one more thing should be said that also uh, you could contact Nook in um, for, for the advice and for uh, providing trustful contacts. Uh, while we were here we found that uh, Nook has really good network in Ukraine and uh, it should be, yeah. There are different things that should be um, uh, assessed and for example, the when it comes for the sunflower kernels, the previous year was not that good uh, and the quality of the harvest was not uh, good enough. Uh, so this one and then uh, this 10% uh, of uh, export, uh, we were highlighting this on uh, the conference yesterday that it might be um, a good uh, solution to divide the sunflower kernels in two groups, uh, the oilic one and the confectionery one, so that we can um, eliminate the 10% of, uh, of uh, added uh, tax yeah, uh, for the export. And then logistics. Um, there are also different ways to, to export as uh, Yula has uh, shown. So this kind of risks might be uh, we want to highlight that uh, Ukrainian companies are eager to work with uh, Norwegian companies and they, uh, to, they promised and they said that they will do everything possible from their side to have the better quality for experts. For example, they can divide the better quality and the poorer quality and f uh, leave poorer quality in Ukraine and send for experts the better quality. Uh, so maybe the main risk, as was said, is the uh, weather conditions if the crop in total in Ukraine will be okay. 
So, and all other uh, questions can be solved and uh, we saw that Ukrainian companies want to uh, do their best to solve any kind of difficulties. Um, so, let's start our presentation. Um, uh, basically, we will talk about the opportunities for export of berries uh, from Ukraine uh, to Norway. Uh, and if we talk about berries, we mean uh, cranberries, uh, blueberries, uh, uh, raspberries, and uh, strawberries. Okay, just seems that it doesn't work. Okay. <laughs> Uh, so basically we'll talk about the general picture of uh, Ukrainian market, of production and its uh, positioning uh, with regard to world uh, major producers of uh, the berries. Uh, also we uh, will check, uh, we'll provide some information about the uh, current situation of uh, and sources of uh, imports of Nor Norway from uh, uh, other countries as well. Uh, the pricing issue. Uh, certifications uh, uh, about uh, tariffs, logistics, and qualities. <clears throat> so, uh, if you talk about the uh, uh, production of berries in Ukraine, as we can see from this uh, slide, um, we can uh, basically divide it like in two uh, kinds of berries. Cr cranberries and blueberries are not that uh, much uh, in a big volume uh, berries, but still we have uh, some. Uh, uh, some growing trend uh, of production. It's in tons. It's uh, an estimation uh, which is provided by uh, Ukrainian statistics uh, uh, com committee. And uh, uh, cranberries we produce around 800 uh, tons and blueberries around uh, 1,300 tons. Uh, and if you talk about strawberries and uh, raspberries, it's also a little bit uh, increasing uh, for over time. Uh, and it's uh, like uh, much uh, larger volumes. Uh, it's in tens of thousands of uh, tons. Uh, so basically we have uh, like uh, these uh, small volume uh, berries and large volume berries. If we talk about, uh, if we talk about the cranberries here, we mean, uh, unfortunately, we couldn't, uh, we couldn't differentiate between the wild and uh, uh, cultural uh, berries. Uh, because uh, Ukrainian statistics, uh, uh, they don't differentiate between them, and actually we just uh, we couldn't find data anywhere. So uh, we provided uh, an aggregate because there is no uh, no, dif no no di differentiation between these berries. Most of the berries, actually, if you talk about cranberries and blueberries, are actually wild berries. So I guess uh, like uh, we we could assume that these are wild ones. Uh, if you talk about the sources where uh, Norway uh, imports uh, uh, cranberries, uh, these are uh, like two sources. Uh, some of them come from uh, Latin America, some come from Europe. I'm not sure about the uh, Latin America, uh, basically, uh, but that's anyway which provided Norway Statistics Committee uh, that there are uh, these uh, sources uh, which come to Norway. Uh, uh, if you talk about the look at these sources in more detail, we see, and also the prices, like a green range uh, here is uh, basically, let me describe, is uh, a range of prices uh, uh, of different uh, exporters to Norway uh, from statistics. These are uh, CIF price prices, and we see that it's quite, uh, quite uh, uh, wide, and we see that also that uh, Ukrainian, for example, exports price is quite uh, Low and uh, basically, if you took into account um, uh, tariffs and uh, logistics, it uh, might be marginally marginally interesting for uh, for Norway. Uh, if you look at uh, blueberries, uh, basically they come either from Sweden or Poland, uh, and it's like two major markets for Norway. Of course, we do not take into account the exports here, and uh, we are not sure that. 52% uh, of uh, berries which come from uh, Poland to Norway are actually Polish berries. Maybe there are some Ukrainian ones. If we uh, look at uh, uh, a few uh, 
next slides, uh, we will see that Ukraine exports varies uh, a lot uh, to Europe and many countries in Eastern Europe and Western Europe as well. Uh, so uh, we, we should be careful for, about these approximations. It's like a big picture. We need to uh, deep, uh, deeper in order to uh, be sure that uh, about the origin of these berries. Uh, the, same about, uh, the same about blueberries, we see that uh, actually we have the price data for Ukraine and as we see it, uh, from statistics of Norway, uh, CIF price for Ukraine, uh, uh, Ukraine exported 24 tons of uh, blueberries to Norway already in 2014 and it's, uh, it was priced at a uh, quite high range of 4, four uh, euro per kilogram uh, around uh, and we see that Ukraine is basically in the market uh, uh, as well uh, as with the price and uh, it could be quite competitive basically, I guess. Taking into account the x range which we took from the market uh, and it's also quite low. So we guess uh, from this point of view, at least from the price and actual uh, deliveries, uh, we might be uh, uh, quite good for the market. Uh, if you look at destinations of uh, cranberries and blueberries from this market, we see that where Ukraine exports cranberries and blueberries. Actually, we uh, export to many uh, countries around Europe, uh, especially Poland is the largest market, So, uh, which I al already mentioned, like around 5.5 thousand tons we export to Poland. Uh, unfortunately, we couldn't differentiate statistics between these two because in Ukrainian statistics uh, they have all of these combined, uh, cranberries and blueberries. But anyway, um, and they didn't uh, provide us a uh, reply to our request, which we asked them officially, uh, which uh, they should have requ re replied, but they didn't, <laughs> unfortunately, uh, uh, to, to separate these two. So. Um, and as you see, the prices are quite, quite, difficult, uh, quite different, and these are FOB prices for Ukraine taken from statistics. Uh, uh, if you look at strawberries, uh, I'm not sure whether uh, we should uh, put attention to strawberries and raspberries in the presentation. Matthias, uh, should we stop here or continue further, uh, or uh, we should present them as well? Okay, so basically we have strawberries, which uh, mostly also come from uh, Poland and China. Uh, and, uh, uh, but for strawberries, as we see from this price range, they are quite uh, close, uh, Norway and Ukrainian, and Norway is CIF, and Ukraine is X-Works. Uh, we see that Ukraine might not be uh, competitive with regard to strawberries. Uh, so uh, these are not maybe the best idea to sell them to Norway. Uh, this uh, export destination for strawberries, basically, we export to Russia. Um, and uh, for uh, raspberries, uh, most of them also come from Poland, uh, some from Serbia and some from Germany. Uh, and for raspberries, uh, we are, uh, the range for, for, for Norway is quite, uh, quite big, and Serbia, for some reason, sells quite expensive uh, raspberries to Norway. And Ukraine, uh, if, you, if you look at Serbia, at least example, and Ukraine is, might be uh, quite competitive uh, as, as well. If Serbia can sell something at this high price, maybe Ukraine will also be able to do so. Um, uh, the same uh, with export destinations for Ukraine. Uh, a lot of European countries, uh, we export raspberries around Europe. And the price uh, is quite good, FOB also. Okay. And they are interested in uh, European partners. So they just told us, okay, you should just send us your specifications and we'll find an actual berries for this one. They uh, pretty much, we will talk about a partner that we find for you, but uh, I want to mention that they have, uh, most of them have their own laboratory controls. So uh, they don't just use Ukrainian standards for this and they really want their berries to be the best. I want to mention that we have three different types of uh, berries. Mostly uh, I will talk about wild berries like blueberry or cranberry. And we want to talk about a third type uh, because uh, their quality is pretty low. Uh, so here you can see this, uh, the same uh, things, uh, you, you won't see the same uh, stu uh, stuff for quality control, but you will see only differences. 
and uh, oh, we don't have a really nice nutrition control, but uh, most of our good companies who are willing to export, they are doing it by themselves. So uh, I want to mention that uh, it all depends on companies. Uh, they, w uh, they want to check uh, for quality control that is using in European markets. And the main our problem is still that Ukrainian government uh, doesn't harmonize uh, uh, European standards to Ukraine. If you're talking about logistics, uh, let me um, uh, take into the fact that um, limit of weight per truck in Norway is uh, 21 ton per truck, same as in European Union. Uh, taking this fact into account, um, I would say that the optimal way to ship is by truck from Ukraine to Norway directly, using probably uh, some of the uh, ferries. So, uh, as I said, currently at this particular moment we can find uh, a truck who is able to do a shipment from Ukraine to Norway for these prices. And we've done a quite big work on this uh, because we were finding, we were looking for backloads for those trucks so that they won't be going empty back way. Uh, from Norway to Ukraine because it increases costs and uh, giving them uh, um, load on the way to Norway and load on the way to Ukraine, we are decreasing the cost of it. So uh, you will see in the report that we counted uh, different ways and uh, basically this one is the most optimal. It's probably uh, with use of ferries on the way. But it depends on particular uh, situation. Well, uh, this is uh, counting with container shipment. It's not feasible at all, because uh, firstly, some of the lines in Baltic Sea, they don't have their own uh, equipment. So you have to bring container from Ukraine. And uh, the only way, if you want to do it in containers, actually, the only way to do it is uh, as a uh, previous group told, is uh, shipping from Odessa with uh, major lines. Yeah, so that's it. In case of questions on logistics, I would be happy to answer. And speaking about certificates that we find, uh, I combined all certifications uh, that European or international certifications that Ukrainian companies have. And actually, we found one company that have all of them, even Global Gap. So I think it will be, uh, it can show potential, uh, potential perspective uh, to export uh, even to your market because uh, certifications for these standards like baby food and organic product uh, are very strict and they have really nice quality. Uh, and I want to mention that they don't work, uh, they work only with wild berries, but speaking about a strawberry, they have 50-50, so 50% so are cultivated and 50% are wild. Uh, each uh, product has um, has item number that consists of eight digits, and uh, the uh, the custom rate uh, was compared. It's uh, um, as you can as one can see, this is uh, or ordinary uh, customs rate, and uh, it was compared to uh, custom rate uh, based on Ukraine tra uh, free trade agreement. So as one can see that. Uh, Based on the agreement, the uh, tariff rate is a bit less. It was also compared uh, to Denmark and, and Sweden as, uh, as Norwegian suppliers. And um, as uh, European Union countries, uh, Sweden and Denmark as European Union countries um, have the same, uh, have the same uh, item numbers. And uh, it's, the berries are imported at zero tariff. Um, okay, so now we are talking about producers of Ukrainian berries and here you can see the map where we set like these flags and 
The red color is for strawberries, uh, blue one is for blueberries, and the orange one is for raspberries and cranberries ones. Uh, so, uh, as we see from this map, uh, the main part of uh, berries producing uh, enterprises are located uh, mostly in the western part of Ukraine, and some of them are on the north. And analyzing these uh, enterprises, we uh, come up with that 65% uh, of these enterprises are, are dealing with the exports. And uh, basically, uh, these uh, berries are sold to Poland. And finally, we uh, analyzed more than 50 uh, firms producing berries, and uh, we uh, had some conversation uh, with mo uh, more than call conversations with more of 20 of them, and more than 10 of them we met personally. Uh, so, uh, as far as we know, um, there are five the most influential Ukrainian companies on the berries market, and uh, we were strongly assured that uh, they are like uh, local monopolists and that they set the prices on uh, Ukrainian berries and uh, uh, exporting berries as well. And uh, here the first one is uh, Rivne Holot, and as far as we uh, considered, um, have some business with this company. And uh, the next one is Primet, also one of the hubs, berries hubs. Uh, Agrana uh, is a well-known uh, company in Europe, and here in Ukraine we have just like a department of this company, and uh, I don't know for sure, but I can claim that uh, uh, also have some business uh, with this company, but not Ukraine, uh, from Ukraine, from other country of Europe. Uh, Polka is a Polish-Ukrainian company, uh, and actually they grow up their berries in Poland, but here in Ukraine we have their um, frozen cap uh, freezing capacities, and they just tr uh, transport they ber their berries from Poland to Ukraine, uh, uh, like freeze them here and uh, resale to Europe. And the last one is Galfrost, uh, also one of the biggest uh, producers, and they are uh, like the closest one to Europe from these five uh, mentioned uh, firms. And yes, and uh, from from these uh, five uh, biggest companies, we. Uh, visited this one, Gelfrost, and uh, uh, also we have a, um, a fruitful discussion with Rivne Holot, so we know a lot of, about these companies. And here you can see the prices, but uh, it's like the critical ones, because now uh, we were told that it is, uh, producers don't know their conditions of uh, on the market in the nearest future, and they can only set like um, uh, critical uh, digitals for um, their prices. And uh, if uh, the uh, situation in Ukraine will be like uh, the worst uh, they can predict, uh, the prices will be like that. But uh, if it will uh, be the same as now, uh, the prices will be lower uh, that this it is mentioned Pro approximately on uh, 15 10 percent lower prices and uh, actually our action plan is uh, to wait for uh, various gathering period and uh, then to check the prices of uh, different Ukrainian firms, and then to make a conclusion of whether Ukrainian berries can be interesting and can be competitive on the European market and uh, for only. Uh, so, uh, uh, some specifics you can find in our 
uh, report and if you can have some questions, we are ready to answer it. Don't hesitate to ask questions. Uh, thanks for your attention. They produce um, around 1,000 to 2,000 tons of frozen uh, berries and uh, they also produce dried frozen berries. Uh, but they are ready, they have enough of uh, equipment and enough of um, wild grown berries to increase the production in case you need it. Uh, we, will include, we already included this information into our um, uh, report, so more, uh, more detailed information will be there. Yeah, and uh, the company seemed very, very nice and uh, European-oriented. Are they exporting to Europe already? Yeah, yeah, they do. They work with Nestle, they work with um, okay. Kraft Foods, Mandeles, already they do. Mostly the wild berries are bought from local uh, kind of um, citizens, in, m entrepreneurs, who uh, themselves set uh, conditions for themselves and uh, they sell it to bigger companies who then resell it to uh, production, big production companies. Um, being at Garfrost, we saw and spoke to personnel and um, they are very open. They, uh, they say that they have uh, total, totally okay with uh, workers' rights and um, in case uh, of an interest, uh, they will be happy to uh, fill out the questionnaire and uh, invite you to the, pro to the production facilities and show you, uh, show you land as well as um, production facilities. And uh, we can assure you that most of the points you have there uh, are like confirmed, were confirmed by Ukrainian um, uh, firms and uh, I can tell you that uh, due to your code of conduct and due to uh, Ukrainian uh, business reality, uh, there is no forced, bonded or involuntary labor, in, at least at this sphere, and the workers are free to leave uh, the workplace premises at the end of the day. and. Uh, uh, workers are not required to lodge deposits or identity papers with the supplier's company and uh, without distinction uh, they have right to join or form trade unions or some associations and uh, uh, there is no physical or mental abuse or um, harassment, you know, and uh, uh, all uh, this stuff is punished and we have uh, like street uh, regulations about this in Ukraine. Good afternoon. Uh, we are Apple Concentrate team and we prepare our report about uh, uh, opportunities to export uh, Apple Concentrate to Norway. So, uh, main producers of uh, Apple Concentrate in Ukraine is Yablonevi Dar, TB Fruit. They have 55 point uh, percent uh, of uh, market share. Uh, then we have Dolher Group, which have 18.3% uh, pers of market share. Agrana, 10.1% uh, of market share. Uh, and uh, the other companies. Uh, for today, these uh, three companies are ready to export uh, their uh, apple concentrate to Norway. Prices uh, for Apple concentrate in e European Union. So uh, we uh, research prices from uh, 212 and 214. So if you see the prices on the Apple concentrate are very different, and there are a lot of uh, features why it's a differ. For example, uh, one of them, uh, this is uh, EU prices, and then I uh, show you the Ukrainian market prices. Uh, 
Uh, this is uh, the following uh, price about uh, Apple concentrate in the Ukrainian market. And if we compare uh, during these five years from uh, 2010 and uh, till 2015, uh, there prices on the market uh, for Apple Consider is very different. In the 2010 to till 2012, uh, the prices on Apple Consider was very low. And uh, there was a lot of uh, um, features why is this uh, was in our market. Uh, uh, first of all, I want to tell about the problems of uh, price ring. Uh, it's uh, a ban uh, to export in Ukrainian apple concentrate to Russia. It's uh, a low price for Chinese uh, apple concentrate, but I need to mention that Ukrainian apple concentrate, I I according to quality grades, is better than Chinese. So, uh, uh, I want to tell you about uh, possible barriers and uh, incentives for import to Norway, and uh, we compare three main issues. Uh, the first issue is a tax issue, is a value added tax for import. When you import to Norway, is there um, Apple concentrate, you can pay this tax. Then the season quotes. Uh, to export uh, our produce uh, and uh, um, Apple concentrate and to obtain Euro 1 certificate. Uh, this certificate uh, is obligatory to our producers when they uh, have export operations and uh, to have uh, one uh, uh, zero duties, to, no, to have no duties, they need to have this certificate. So it's maybe uh, one of the issues. The next is the regulatory requirements. Uh, uh, first of all, is safety requirements, uh, phytosanitary certificates for imports, registration import in the organs of the European Union, uh, the control uh, of uh, products internal for human consumption, and uh, compliance with uh, European law. And uh, there are these issues which uh, can be uh, mentioned uh, for import to Norway is amendments to the legislation of both countries, uh, then the customs clearance and custom uh, documentation, non sustainable economic situation in Ukraine, and low yield capacity of the apples. Uh, in our opinion, it is not high risk, but uh, that can be, and uh, it's need to say about it. So, uh, the quality grades. Uh, for today, uh, we have two main uh, quality standards uh, which are harmonized with uh, the European Union standards. As you can see, the standards is from 2014. They were in use, it was passed one year ago. And uh, uh, we compare it with uh, um, Specification, and we can see that, uh, and we can say th that uh, these uh, uh, standards uh, is are uh, with accordance to the Oracle specification, and a lot of uh, producers which we are research are uh, use these standards. Now about exporters overview, and. Uh, General uh, comment on that, that Ukrainian exporters generally pro produce cloud apple concentrate with bricks um, less than 70 or clear apple concentrate with high level of acidity, more than 3%. And uh, this is uh, for, they usually supply uh, ex export cloud concentrate because it's cheaper for them, equipment is more expensive for clear concentrate to be produced. And on the factories uh, of importers, this concentrate, cloud concentrate, is going to be pro re like produced for the, for the purposes. However, we still were able to identify main exporters in Ukraine that can supply a clear apple concentrate that meet requirements, chemical, uh, so those are, we'll go one by one, it's TB Fruit. It's our top player on the Ukrainian market with more than 50% of market share and more than 140, uh, 1,400 employees on their factories. They have six factories, production factories in Ukraine and two production factories in Poland. And this is a Ukrainian company. And as a bonus document, we attach into our report and uh, portfolio of this company. 
and there will be a lot of more information about their production facilities, etc., and general capacities of each factory. So this is our main exporter we would like to recommend, and they, they have, uh, to our analysis, uh, only pros at this stage, as they can supply big volumes, and that can be also discussed. And um, uh, the price range for the last year was from 70 to 1,000 euros per ton. They provided specification, and um, this company overall uh, received Mark V from our group. Next one, we go in with Dollar Bukovina. This company was acquired in 2013 by Dollar Group, and they have high European standards in their factories, already supplying to European market their apple concentrate, they meet chemical requirements, and we were able to directly contact their production facilities in Vinica region and Ternopil region. They have only 100 kilometers between those production facilities and good communication between those. So uh, each uh, production capacity of each factory is around 2,000 uh, um, to some tons for the following year, for, the, for this uh, uh, following season. However, more exact price numbers and capacity volumes can be provided only, only when we have the season started, when, because it depends on harvest. So uh, going forward, we have Interfruit, and this company is, this is like more smaller supplier. They can only supply um, 2,000 tons per, per the season. They ha have only one factory and around 100 employees uh, on this company. They also provided documentation and very easy to cooperate with. So we also, uh, like, they are qualified. The, the mark from our, from our group is qualified. And the last one that meets all the specification and uh, interested in cooperation, this is Ecosphere. And they have their main office in Kiev, and uh, Vinitsa is the production facility. They also have experience exporting, but only to Israel, Russia, Belarus. Um, doesn't have experience exporting to European market. However, they're still very much interesting. They have high standards in their production facilities, and we also recommend this company. There are a few other companies and with even bigger volumes. However, they were difficult to get a hold of or we had some communication uh, difficulties with them. Either they didn't provide the specification or the information, their websites didn't correspond with the information when we directly communicate with them. So they didn't qualify by our team to be recommended for this a business case. However, this information will be still presented about those companies in our report. So, I mean, that, that can be used for maybe f uh, further and other purposes. So, uh, by, we, we actually made an analysis based on the direct communication with the representatives of those companies. We made this metrics of um, an, an, like analysis of exporters and we ranked each exporter from one to five based uh, five of the highest, based of our opinion on that. And we compared uh, responsiveness, openness for cooperation, volume, capacities, chemical requirements, and uh, flexibility on export terms. And also those documents they were able to provide. And we came up with this grade. So uh, we can see that most of the companies, they have uh, like five uh, rank on these metrics and um, they're very, very flexible and eager to cooperate with. And general uh, terms of export based on this analysis is that buyer is responsible for transportation costs. However, that can be flexible and negotiable, be, so the price of transportation will be included to the price of apple concentrate. Um, they prefer FCA in terms, and just like a general we uh, came across. Apple concentrate is transferred in 22-24 ton tanks, and that will be more dis um, discussed more in the f our transportation section. Uh, production meet Ukrainian standards, which were already mentioned. Apple concentrate that meets the Norwegian buyer, the, the workless requirements is produced in late August. So basically we can expect the first shipment around um, October, late October, early November. And uh, producers can work under 30 days 
payment terms. Basically, also this can be negotiable and some of them didn't like that. They, w they wanted to have prepayment. However, still, they can be flexible. And contact details of sales managers is provided in the report. And they are expecting a contact. And is there any difficulties? Uh, we can actually be a liaison between the communication to help establish the best communication. And a little more about assessment of responsible source and issues. Um, uh, most of exporters, they don't have their own ore charts, and uh, except TB Fruit. This company is um, like one of top producers, and they have their own raw materials production. So, um, uh, but the, the other companies, they uh, have contracts with local farms and orchards to, for supplement of raw materials, fresh apples, uh, and those apples comes with already with uh, a documentation for the quality and on top of that each supplier each exporter of apple cons producer of apple concentrate they do lab tests uh, to ensure this product uh, is um, of a high quality and can be produced in their f facilities and interfood the company that might have resourcing issues because they made all their supplied or their materials from the crimea and now this uh, is kind of very difficult, um, difficult road for them. So, however, they still can uh, meet their capacities, volumes of uh, the needed raw materials, basically supplying from other regions in Ukraine. Vinitsa is have Vinitsa provides one third of all uh, uh, fresh apple production, fresh apple uh, supplement of Ukraine, and uh, that's. Uh, and one company, Ecosphere, they already established procedure of supplier's approval. On their, uh, it's, it's done every year, and that was initiated by, by Pepsi Ukraine, one of their, one of their uh, consumers. So based on this information, we can say that all these companies that are recommended by our group, they have high quality standards and uh, the meet Oracle code of conduct and open for communication and internal audits and would be uh, happy to start cooperation between a Norway supplier. Okay, let, let me turn to the um, transportation case, uh, what we suppose um, are in the focus of any kind of export delivery to European markets. So it appears there are four big uh, players in the market uh, of international uh, delivery uh, in Ukraine to European directions, uh, which provide services of um, liquid, food, bulk, uh, cargo, transportation. And these companies are quite big in number of uh, uh, tank trucks. Uh, and the minimum of tank fleet is around 100 of trucks. Uh, which can uh, do delivery of uh, any food liquids to, to Europe. All these companies are quite good in terms of certification. We are assured they have all necessary documents to provide uh, high standards of that. Uh, we were informed by them that they um, can provide services of, uh, in Euro 3, Euro 4 and Euro 5 uh, delivery. Uh, which is basically this, the, let's say, standards of transportation of uh, um, cargo. And uh, interesting enough that uh, one of the companies, Tantrans, belongs to TB Fruit. TB Fruit actually is a big holding company uh, which has the full cycle of uh, production and delivery. And it, it starts from orchards they, they, they have. Then they have a processing plants, they produce concentrates, they produce, uh, TB fruit produces um, apple juice and apple, apple juice not from concentrate. And they, they market their products as a final um, destination. And of course they have a um, transportation company uh, which runs their business not just in Ukraine but for the Europe. And they have um, Tank Trans Polska uh, the um, Polish uh, daughter, let's say, and the tank 
trans uh, tank fleet is is huge. It's up to uh, 170 trucks that can deliver uh, apple concentrate to uh, any European directions. And two companies um, dis we, we discovered that two of the companies, Tank Trans and Tank Tank Service One, uh, employ own GPS systems that can easily uh, find out where where is a truck right now. You can monitor online where is your cargo right now and what is going on with that. You can even check the temperature condition inside the truck. So it's it's really useful when you're talking about um, ex export operations in this case. Um, let, let's speak about the capacity. The uh, typical tonnage for a truck is from 22 to 24 uh, tons per truck, per tank. Uh, but some, some of them ha have around 30 tons per truck. And that's kind of multi-sectional uh, um, tanks. You can uh, input uh, apple juice, and in, uh, in other section you can put uh, tomato juice. But um, all of these companies assured us that they have uh, own uh, tank washing uh, sites. They can, uh, and they provide. Um, necessary certificates it is, and they uh, assure us that all the uh, tanks are, um, are really cleaned um, and washing are under high pressure and it will help to, to um, assure that the, uh, they deliver uh, high quality products. Uh, let's turn to the, another page, please. And let me talk, to, let me talk to about the transportation costs and routes, because mainly producers um, provided uh, ex forks prices, so uh, we were interested in, in uh, about the transportation costs. And we talked to Stellar, a uh, logistic company, which were in the list, and we present, uh, we provide the table uh, of prices from Chernivtsi to Copenhagen. You can explore the, uh, the typically it will, it will cost you around from 5,000 to 6,000. Uh, euro per per truck to deliver uh, the cargo from Ukraine for for from western part of Ukraine, which is like Ternopil, Vinnytsia, uh, to Oslo, for instance. But you can check uh, other destination to Copenhagen, for instance. And the prices were given like a, a week ago, and of course it was calculated as for amount around 100 tons. So the more amount you have to deliver and you agree on higher amounts, uh, the less you pay in terms of uh, tonnage uh, price. Um, so let's, and, uh, so let's, turn, uh, let's speak about the routes. Uh, we, had, we were advised that uh, all these transportation companies, they, they advise us uh, to follow the route from um, from Germany, uh, ferry site, uh, which basically located in in Rostock, uh, and to uh, and it employs ferry to Denmark. Then it goes again with, with the truck to Oslo or to other destination in Scandinavia. Uh, but um, we found out that um, when we were talking about to cut the price for. Uh, delivery, we were advised to, uh, to employ other route, um, which um, start from uh, Polish um, Gdansk and Gdina ferry sites, and it's, it's much cheaper to, uh, to buy the ticket for a ferry, because uh, it's le le less price uh, comparing with uh, uh, Rostock, for instance. Um, and on the other hand, you would not pay for a quite expensive German toll roads. Uh, and in this case, you will even save money, and let's say five, uh, up to 10 euro per uh, ton uh, for the delivery of cargo to Oslo, for instance. Uh, let's turn to the another. Uh, and that's uh, action plan uh, we provide for, and we suppose uh, you'll have uh, uh, in-depth look while reading our report, but I will cover them like, like bullet point, uh, pitfalls uh, in the way of 
start initiation business between Ukrainian uh, apple concentrate producer and and I would say that the, the biggest issue is to estimate the price for the upcoming season because uh, none of these guys um, was ready to to provide like ex exact price tags for a ton for the next season. It de all depends on the uh, yield of apples. It all depends on the prices for uh, their raw material base. And I would say just TB fruit is is ready to somehow provide a a good uh, estimation for a price. Uh, but what else uh, is important uh, in a way of uh, starting this business? Uh, you should understand that all the ne negotiation towards to start this business should uh, should be started right right now um, in, in June, for instance, because uh, all the producers are uh, estimating their all raw materials based on the amount of contracts and contract amounts for Apple concerts they have. So in case you start dealing with them in, in August, it won't have any, any sense because they have, their capacities uh, are almost full, uh, keeping in mind the previous years. So uh, it's better to start negotiation in June and finish uh, contract draft in, in July, for instance, because uh, the, the earliest uh, fresh apple um, input which goes which go to factories, for instance, it starts from late August um, in these areas um, rega uh, regarding the um, uh, apple concentrates, um, what we have to deliver to Norway. And of course, the processing uh, as, uh, is starting from late September and uh, is going all the fall season. Hello, so my name is Victoria and I'm my colleagues on the Costa, I guess you know all of them. <laughs> uh, so we have a tomato industry report and the potential of Ukrainian producers to export to Norway. Uh, so we'll briefly go through the tomato industry overview in Ukraine and then see the potential to export to Norway, whether there is a demand. Uh, we'll see the custom use and how Norway is protecting its, their own uh, farmers. Then we'll, of course, go through the cost like transportation and certification. Uh, we will conclude with gap analysis and code of conduct issues that may arise in Ukraine. And, uh, of course, we will briefly go through the Ukraine producers that can be potentially uh, exported to Norway. Uh, and at the end, we will have the final price breakdown, so basically when it's better to, to export and what it takes, like what parts of the coast are creating the final price, basically. So, since Ukraine classification is harmonized with the European, we have two categories that we were analyzing. One is tomato smash or chill, with such eight digit number, and uh, tomato paste. Um, Ukrainian market, Ukraine is one of the top 10 world producers of tomatoes in the world. And as we see, Ukraine is producing over 2 million tons per year. And I mean, since harvest decline every year, it's kind of fluctuated a bit, but still it's around 2 million. However, we export really small quantities. Um, I guess like partially some of these fresh tomatoes are going to produce a tomato paste and it's around 20% of the whole production but still there is a lot of potential. So 20% of the whole to make fresh tomatoes goes into paste? Yes, yes, it's right. 20% of At least it's, it was such in 2014. Um, yeah, and tomato paste is kind of... <laughs> Ukrainians love tomato paste as well, we use it for different dish dishes, so we of course eat it, but we also export a bit more. You also mentioned that the Ukraine should start exporting hot sheep, yeah. Oh, <laughs> we do that then. I love that. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's an interesting point. We should 
And we also did this graph because you can agree with that it was quite, quite significantly. It was around 2.3 times the variation. And uh, this basically it doesn't decrease the cost of production by 2.3, but I guess it, it decreases it around like 30% since so the salaries are paid in goodness and some other services uh, in Europe, like taken in Ukraine. Uh, are paid in greatness. So we have such an assumption that it decreases the final price, and this is when the trends become very competitive. Um, yeah, and regarding the Norway Ukraine FTA, I think we all know already the improvement in agriculture, uh, which entered into force the 1st June 2012. And uh, Norway is importing uh, more than 25,000 tons of fresh tomatoes per year. But of course, it is produced in their own, so that's why they have this protection this policy. Um, we see that the import is growing and the overall production is kind of on the same level. Yes, I don't remember it. How, many, how much did you try to produce of fresh tomatoes? Two million. Two million, and we have 25,000, so it's like... Yeah, it's like yeah, like 10% basically. So we can satisfy the whole import needs in <laughs> um, And this graph nicely illustrates how Norway is protecting their own farmers. So basically, here are the tariffs. And we see that when the harvest is starting, it's the 10th of May, if Norway introduces the um, import tariff. And well, Ukraine is kind of in the middle. It has better conditions than ordinary, right, than any other countries that doesn't have any bilateral agreements with Norway. But it has worse conditions compared to the EU. And it goes through the whole uh, time of protectionism besides the like 15 days here. It's basically from 15 September till 30th of October. And so we can see that Around that time, it's really hard for Ukraine to be competitive and to export. Uh, since, like, if you have 11 kronen per kilo import tariffs, that's a lot. It's like the cost of production should be super small in order to satisfy the demand price. Uh, therefore, we were mostly thinking that Ukraine can be very really competitive within that time when tariffs are zero. But we'll see the more about this. Um, the main importers to Norway are Spain and Netherlands, they are taking around 90% of the market. And uh, Netherlands are really close to Norway, so you just need to take a boat or truck. So that's why Netherlands are very competitive, and since they have greenhouses of high efficiency, they can produce the whole year. And as we see, this blue part is the share of the Netherlands, so they're quite the same every month, just, just a bit more, just a bit uh, little drop within the protection time, but, but still. Um, when talking about tomato paste, Norway doesn't have any customs duties, so this is the time when Ukraine can be very competitive, uh, and it's also added in value to Ukraine, because process the, their own raw materials inside and, and, and uh, top and makes the price a bit higher. And um, the total import is around 20,000 ton. And main suppliers are Italy, which are taking like 50 percent but there is no separation between industrial use and, and uh, B2C like consumers use. That's why, as I remember, like all tomato pads that you can find in glass uh, cans, uh, they're all from Italy, like vanilla and they're all Italian, so, and the Norwegians are consuming that a lot. So I guess like the competition within the industrial tomato paste is very diversified, and Ukraine that can actually enter this competition. And uh, so we're going to have a bit more about cost to make us cost 
continue? Actually, we um, calculated four um, options to um, have ship the crops to. Yeah, okay. That's good if you use it. So we calculated uh, actually four options to ship the crops, uh, and uh, kind of, uh, two of them were you know thrown out uh, from the very beginning. Uh, it was kind of airplane and uh, train because it was uh, relevant so and uh, then we uh, kind of analyzed the possibility to ship with the uh, kind of YFC with maritime companies and uh, the production plans. Uh, at the beginning of cooperation uh, there is no uh, kind of uh, logic in uh, cooperation with uh, decisions because of uh, amounts. So if you are to ship a big amount, this is this could be an option, but it's not for the fresh product. This will be for placement. So the optimal uh, path will be the truck transportation, and uh, uh, though um, we kind of have another information from different suppliers, but we uh, kind of uh, identify here the lowest one. So there could be some kind of fluctuation, but we uh, have. Uh, take this into account based on the yeah, uh, price provided by the Dell Transportation Company. Uh, and I believe they have uh, kind of competitors as well, so maybe this would be uh, kind of, uh, a competition part for them. And about the cost of certification, so... Uh, may, may I ask? Yeah. Maybe this is a question for also the guys behind me. <coughs> Why do you uh, say the shipment uh, time is two to three days and the seeds group said four to six days? Why is it taking longer with the seeds? Well, actually, I don't know because uh, it was a direct request about the domains uh, to the company that uh, provided us with this uh, kind of uh, information backwards. So this is very important. But, uh, well, in, in case that there is a comment from uh, what
for exporting leads, uh, you should know what certification it should be, and uh, well, uh, maybe uh, the best option will be uh, if it is possible in terms of you know growing facilities, uh, the organic certification. So uh, this uh, organic certification provides you direct access to a kind of uh, European market. It is fully you know in line with uh, the legislation of you. And about the yeah, analysis, um, again, uh, we had a uh, kind of uh, discussion about the gap analysis, and uh, it remains pretty much the same. The uh, like uh, remains pretty much the same, uh, but we have excluded the uh, kind of point where we advise to communicate with uh, small and medium companies first. Uh, because there is no kind of uh, unique uh, kind of thought in our group. Uh, every has its own experience, so uh, it can be only validated by means of big data, like as Tom Kovac has explained. So only in case of cooperation you will find out the best supplier you will provide. But at the same time we see that uh, both uh, big and ones uh, are eager to try cooperation and uh, like it, this is the matter of let's see what comes out, let's cooperate with them if they have good quality and good price. So this is pretty much it. Um, what we call the comment. So, um, I like this slide very much. It is very uh, texty. <laughs> uh, and uh, about the GMO warranty, about the specification on uh, how the GMO and non GMO product are processed and stored uh, within one company, is uh, and requirements, and the microbiology, biology, which is required to. For the export, which is described here, because we didn't get the specifications from Porto. Hello to everyone. Thank you, Mr. Chair, because I am the last, this is the last part of the information. So, as you actually all know already, um, our greenhouses are not that competitive, and actually it could be, and Ukrainian uh, greenhouses lose. Uh, the competition with Netherlands, like uh, all other countries, because uh, Netherlands greenhouses are actually the best on the world, and the price that they can offer is um, really um, really competitive on the market. So key players in Netherlands, Spain, uh, Turkey, and Morocco, the premium price are not so that good, but uh, we have the time when uh, economic <coughs> prices are quite low, this is uh, high speed, um, and the price uh, become really competitive. But actually, if you take into account uh, in Norway, uh, exactly in that time, um, Norway protects uh, their producers. So, the question marks. Uh, okay, thank you for a moment. The only ones we have competitive and no way uh, is eager to to buy import tomato. This is no uh, this is no vendor. So this is a fresh tomato. Yes, for a greenhouse tomato, fresh tomato. This is our key uh, uh, producers of uh, key greenhouses. This is Kalinika, Umanski, uh, Zmielewski, Dubowski, and uh, DF Arnold. Um, actually, I will be a, a commercial offer from uh, almost all of them. Uh, from four proposals from one. So Umanski didn't give this commercial proposal. Build the markets. Really? It's a very attractive price. And so uh, the Ukrainian markets are very tasty. They can be positioned as a organic one. Okay, they are not that perfectly looking like a uh, skin house one, but uh, still uh, they have very strong competitive advantage because this organic trend in food in the world they become more and more popular. So. So these prices are probably for non organic. So if I would just organic, it would be more expensive, right? I asked about uh, organic certificate, and at least uh, this 
This producer, they have organic certificate. And then the price is and zero for yeah. the price is that the gap is that huge. Actually, our uh, agricultural operators uh, they like knowledge in commerce and business because they are not able to give for uh, to give the price and even uh, best guess for price uh, before the the season starts because they said that they cannot uh, forecast, they, uh, uh, they cannot uh, make sure of what weather will be uh, and all other things. Do you have any opinion or, or, uh, about how much more expensive organic tomatoes are than non-organic? These are organic and prices... Only or far? Only. They have a specific so they So all their production is organic? And so organic tomatoes can also be as cheap as one grain per kilo. Um, this is the yeah. So they they are not more expensive than. Uh, I think there should be some So they are not so much more uh, expensive than other. Very much. Because uh, this uh, this company uh, this is uh, American company and they start the business. Uh, and this level that they have also yes, mm -hmm. So this is competitive environment in Europe for for tomato paste. And actually this is the competitors of Ukrainian producers pricing with this is Spain, Italy and China. But Norway for the 50% of the Yes. So Even so though it's Spain are cheaper. Yes. yes. Maybe because the reason we talked, uh, this is uh, it, uh, it, uh, the producer name, brand name yeah. of compared to original as it sells, so it's more. But the Ukrainian tomato based from agrofusion, uh, they position themselves like uh, like premium quality. Uh, this is agrofusion and small plant plus one. Uh, we also met the sales agent yesterday and he is very proactive and saying that he is open to all adjustments, just to fit all requirements. But uh, his price of now is not very proactive. But I mean, there must be more. Is, is, I mean, there isn't there someone between there? Like, just like, you have more companies, right? Yes. You could just even yeah. though they didn't reply you, maybe they yes, are. No, no, they all replied. Um, I contacted still six, I think. And so the issue is that, uh, um, that they do not sell in production package. Because selling for consumers is more, and uh, it's value more expensive. So that's why they choose to, to sell uh, uh, to end consumers or use themselves for juices with uh, more ending quality. No, I don't understand. Do you mean are they selling in big bags or are they selling they in small? Sell. They do not sell in big bags because they can sell in small bags with higher <coughs> margin. So what is the biggest they sell? Is it like a... Uh, uh, five kilos. Five kilos. Yes. So this, but the yes. normal is... And then in 250. Yeah, this is production Rams. packaging. 200, 250 kilos of production packaging. Okay. Okay. What's your but but uh, is that is so it's one bag in 250 kilos or is it like in many small like this? One bag. For one production bag. package. And then, then we just bag. need to process it and package it smaller. Yes. Is it the same with agrofusion? They don't have smaller in my brain package? I don't know whether they have smaller, but I know that they have a big one as well as the song. Because this was my question. And some lawyers and uh and Audacity to fans, they said that they do not pass in the they do not sell in this package. So that So this means basically that they are most suitable for big processing of the companies at Orta, not for the end market, for supermarket and import. Yes. This is final price breakdown and comparison. Um, yeah. uh, 
and from this we can see that it's, uh, uh, actually we have we see three potential ideas uh, for uh, for guiding between Ukraine and Norway. The first one is export of greenhouse tomatoes uh, in October November. The second one is export of pure tomatoes as organic one. Also in October November. Um, it's from July till November because so that can be competitive even earlier. Um, can be. And export of tomatoes next. This is export of tomatoes <coughs> for for industrial baker, industrial consumption. Yes. And if uh, someone <coughs> would like uh, uh, end consumer uh, tomato paste, this would be good. But I'm pretty sure we can make competitive products of them. For industrial, but not for end well, consumers. Do you think that it will be possible? It will be. It will be because uh, uh, because packaging for production and uh, labor work is uh, cheaper. Mm -hmm. It would be interesting to know what to do to do that in Ukraine. What companies? We need to pack it in small. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So have some can do that. Everyone can do that. Two marks and door. Much more suppliers. And would the prices still be competitive? I'm not sure. But uh, you know, we do not have this case. But probably not. Is the information in here? Very huge. Very huge. And that's why it gives a much smaller price, much lower price than, than Ukraine can. Because and, and when it comes to the fresh tomatoes, are these fields, organic ones, and the greenhouse tomatoes, are they the same type of tomatoes as the Norwegian swan, or is it a different Ukrainian sort? Uh, there, uh, yeah. there are different sort, sorts, yeah. and uh, there are a lot of tasty sorts, tasty for vegetables, really. Not only the one you do. So there can also be these smaller, yes. nice, cherry tomatoes, cherry tomatoes, etc. Just, just a big ones. Uh, there is no big ones. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, tomatoes, uh, usually they are not cherry because cherry this is about greenhouse, greenhouse, greenhouse. What I mean, the tomatoes in the fields in the greenhouses are they what the Norwegian consumers buy? Are the, is it the same as we import from Spain, or is it a different uh, sort? Hi. Yes. Um, actually, uh, I think we have the sort you said you could you buy because we have a lot so it's So it's not this big you find the uh, yeah, private the ones, because that is not what that is not for export. Mm -hmm. That is not suitable for the retail market. But these kinds of normal. I, I know from all producers at least about five sorts they have. It can be this one, it can be this one, we call the sleep. Uh, so there, there are tomatoes that could be exported? Yes. yes. Uh, but exported and packed. <coughs> but I think the problem with field tomatoes is that Usually, Europe wants like particular shapes, size, and color, and those for slow national. And field tomatoes, they're very normal shapes. Yeah, even though they're Yes. So, so the greenhouse tomatoes are more. So, greenhouse and at least that's a difference. And are they no, packed in like a bag like that, or like a. Yeah, packed in any in way. In paper books. In paper books. In any way, there are three options for export. So that's the smallest one that they would want to make it. Or is it the wooden ones? There are three options. I have the information I can share. Maybe you include that in the word. Okay, very good. Thank you very much. Anything else? I've been asking throughout the, 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 the presentation, so I don't have one. Do you mean on the competitive products? No. no. Is there more to add? No. This is all. Just thank you. Thank you to all of you for listening, for preparation, for inspiration in other business cases.